Okay, well, TTV made another top 10 Bionicle list. I don't think they're going to be doing anything involving Hero Factor when it comes to these top 10 lists. So you know what? I'm going to make my own. I'm Ian Gorx, and this is the top 10 Hero Factory sets. At number 10, we have Fire Lord. Fire Lord was the first Titan set to use the new system, now known as CCBS. It has a consistent color scheme using all three warm colors, plus silver and gunmetal gray, which gives it a nice mechanical look considering how Fire Lord is supposed to be a mining robot. And it's also well executed. His jetpack is great, his weapon is great, and I don't know what else to say about Fire Lord. He's a great set. At number 9 we have Meltdown. Meltdown is a Cyclops. He has radioactive tanks on his shoulders. He has really nice looking claws, and the weapons really do work well with them. He has a color scheme of black, yellow, and trans bright green. Those three colors look great together. I would have to say Meltdown is probably my favorite 1.0 villain. Despite him having more or less the same build as the rest of them, Meltdown definitely has some uniqueness to him. At number 8, we have the 2.0 heroes. These were the first, I guess you can say, small sets in the CCBS building system. And despite being more or less the same, they have their own traits that are unique. They have individual headpieces, they have individual weapons, which for the most part are individual. Four of them have a shield, and but each shield is unique in its own way. This same system would be used on every construction set to this day. At number 7 we have Stringer Breakout. Despite being small, Stringer would probably be my favorite breakout hero. We all know Stringer has sound powers, which works well because he has speakers on his shoulders and a guitar-like weapon. It may be a step away from the orange and yellow color scheme that we're used to seeing on Stringer, but the printed trans dark blue chest plate makes up for it. At number 6 we have Voltix. Now, some would say Voltix has a very messy color scheme, but I would have to disagree with that. Really, the only major colors on this set are black, gunmetal, red, and purple. Those are the main colors that you see. The yellow is all electricity. It's not part of him exactly, but it's part of his powers. And Voltix is well executed for an electric powered villain. He has a switch on his back and he has wires. He also has electricity coming out of his head. He also has a spinning tentacle weapon which is supposed to be a lightning whip of some sorts. I guess it works for him but I don't know if I would have picked that tentacle piece. At number 5 we have Surge Brain Attack. He has a nice blend of colors which happens to be silver, blue, and trans neon green. He has a printed visor which actually helps him define him as Surge because Without the visor, he doesn't look too much like Surge. The basic structure looks the same as his other incarnations, but it's really the eyes that kind of make Surge what he is. And the visor really adds to that. The jetpack, while being asymmetrical, actually works for him, and it's really nice. He also has a weapon, which is pretty much the same as Pyrox's from the previous wave of Brain Attack, but it works well for Surge. At number 4, we have Ferno XL. Now, Ferno XL is pretty unique with an XL build. He's the first Hero Factory set to have a cape. The cape doesn't look too good with the rest of his colors, which happen to be red, silver, and gunmetal. But it's alright. I don't mind it. I kind of like it. Hell, he'd probably look a lot worse without the cape. The sword and shield introduce quite a few new pieces in Brain Attack. First, the shield pieces themselves, the flames, and the actual sword piece, which is really nice and, and is still used to this day. At number 3 we have Scorpio. Scorpio is the largest set using Hero Factory's building system that uses little to no Technic pieces whatsoever. The only ones that are really used are maybe two in the torso, a few in the tail, and a few in the jaws to hold his pinchers in place. But it's really well executed, you can tell it's a scorpion. It doesn't have the greatest color scheme in the world, being black, red, and lime green. Not my favorite choice of colors, but it works. At number 2 we have Black Phantom. Now Black Phantom is pretty much a clone of Fire Lord, but better. Unlike Fire Lord, Black Phantom has movable arms and probably a better color scheme. Now Fire Lord had a good color scheme, but Black Phantom definitely has less colors, and it looks a lot cleaner. The Arachnix drone is pretty cool, being a mixture of a bug and a blaster. The staff is also pretty cool. I'm not sure how I'd feel with the blade at the bottom of it though, but I still like it. It works for Black Phantom. 
He also has blades coming out of his back, which seem kind of random, but they look pretty cool. I'm not going to complain too much about them. At number one, we have Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor is the largest set using the CCBS building system, and it actually makes a good blend of Technic and CCBS. It's also the largest Hero Factory set. The spikes work really good for him and his concept, but my only major gripe with Witch Doctor is his staff, which I, can, I can't even call it a staff, that's more like a rattle. Before I end this video, I just want to give a few honorable mentions that were not included in this top 10, but maybe should have been. The 3.0 heroes. The 3.0 heroes are a little bit different from the 2.0 heroes. They just really have animal armor, or powers, I guess, despite the powers not even being used in Savage Planet, but they're still pretty cool. The Fire Villains, these being the first medium-sized sets introduced in the CCBS building system. Breakout Raka. The only reason he was not put on this list was because of his unusual arm and the ammo belt be getting in the way of him. And the last one, Dragon Bolt. I kind of wanted Dragon Bolt to be part of this list, but we decided not to. This top 10 list was made by me, Ryaso, and Tumblr635, basically giving our own opinions on the set and deciding which ones are better and worse. We also made two more top 10 lists. Check out Tumblr 65's top 10 worst Bionicle sets and Ryaso's top 10 worst Hero Factory sets. This is Ian Gorix and I'll see you guys later.